What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 143 and we start today's episode with player training here and also me requesting some funds from the board as well I asked for a whopping 10 million pounds and I told him I'd reach the Tim Cup final and get to the Champions League final as well and the board said all right that's fine and that's a real surprise but I guess it's not too surprising because I have heard this year that requesting funds is a lot easier and you can get more money than you used to be able to last year you request four million pounds from Manchester City's board and they'd say something like we don't have the financial means to pull that off or something stupid but now requesting funds is no longer as hard as it used to be so the board gives the full amount of 10 million pounds really really pleased with that uh, also a big coming for Ron McNally there and one for Origi as well we stole the Origi one but rejected the Ron McNally one so 10 million pounds from the board very happy with that and as you can see as well that will hopefully help us sign one player in this window and the guy that I'm desperate for you guys know who it is I mentioned him in the last episode Marco Verratti from Juventus 28 years old, central midfielder, can also play DM as well. Four-star weak foot and four-star skills. I do believe those skill moves have been improved this year. And he's also got high, high work rate as well, which I love. 88 overall, looks absolutely fantastic. His stats are amazing. I would love to get this guy in to replace Bonaventura. I put in a bit of 35, uh, 37 million pounds plus poly, and we shall wait and see what Juventus say. I don't predict them accepting that, but you never know. So as you can see, they came back to us straight away. I was going to be dramatic there. They came back to straight away and said no that's rubbish we're not accepting that they don't want poly and the money's not enough on its own also Liverpool came in for Morata 52 million pounds we said forget about it he's in form right now playing very well 88 overall have no plan to sell him and also uh, funnily enough after Juventus rejected a bid for uh, Verratti which included poly Sporting came in for poly and said we'd like the 31 year old even if Juventus wouldn't we'll give you seven and a half million pounds for him he's valued at 8.5 million pounds but we know we can get a little bit more than that so I asked for nine million pounds and we shall wait and see what the Portuguese side say uh, also the bid for Origi as well I was still considering this one it was 22.5 million pounds which is a valuation bid for our Belgian striker we signed him for I believe it was 17 million pounds in the summer transfer window not too much anyway so we would make a profit on him and uh, as you can see their sporting do accept the counter off of a poly so he looks like he's on his way to Portugal for 9 million pounds I wouldn't be against selling Origi I haven't really scored too many goals from him this season he is a backup striker but he's not really banging him in when he comes off the bench or starts in midweek and cup games so I'm not against selling him but 22 and a half million pounds I'd want it to be a little bit more than that because don't forget the board take 15% off the uh, the fee we get for him anyway and I want to make sure that if we do sell him we can sign someone better in his place so I'm going to be looking for about 40 to 50 million pounds which is crazy I know but that's over his uh, over double his valuation but uh, I believe that he's worth that person speaking and uh, we shall wait and see what any clubs say if they do put in bids for him because I will I, I do believe he will get quite a few bids in this transfer window he's one of those players who again it says he's in good form sometimes sometimes he's in okay form never seen to be in bad form even though he is that plays in our favour of course we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens with Origi during his transfer window Either way, we're taking on Torino here for the first game of today's episode and what a goal this would have been directly from kickoff we controlled the ball passed it around tried to get the opening goal of the game but Fideli stopped me from scoring a really nice team goal and kept the score scoreless so still Milan nil, Torino nil, and our last four games have been 3-0 2-0 3-0 and 2-0 so really pleased with our recent form of late 10 goals in the last four games Games. Four clean sheets in a row as well. Is that right? Please tell me that's right. Ten goals in the last four games. I think it is. But either way, really, really good form of late. Been playing very, very well indeed. Now taking on Torino here back at the San Siro. Taking on Torino here. Of course, I used them in my FIFA 15 career mode. It was an all right start. There were a couple of chances for both sides in the first half, really. Had a great one here five minutes before the break. Marco Ryan Taylor was stood over this free kick. Hasn't scored in a couple of games, Marco. He was 30 yards out. I thought this is the chance for his first free kick goal this season but sadly curled it over the bar and behind for a goal kick. I am just rubbish at free kicks in FIFA. It's something I've always struggled with ever since FIFA, well, FIFA 12 really. I was good in, well, actually I was alright in FIFA 12 and FIFA 11 I was really good, but ever since then I've been pretty awful. But uh, still, still Ryan Tallery searching for his first free kick goal of the year and it's still Milan nil, Torino nil. In the second half though, Torino came out of the blocks flying. I felt we played better in the first half, had a bit more possession as well. But in the second half, Torino looked really strong. Five minutes after the restart, Djokovic had to make a good save there and keep it at nil, nil. From the corner, 
We failed to deal there. It came to Paragini here through to Bernassi. Eventually, Davison goes for goal. But Djokovic once again makes the save, and a Canadian looks for his fourth clean sheet in a row. And Milan's fifth in all competitions with Gabriel picking up one as well. So still Milan 0 Torino 0. The final chance fell in the 83rd minute. We saw a header well saved by Pedelli, and then a second header cleared off the line. And the game did finish here at the San Siro. Milan 0 Torino 0. So disappointed not to extend the win streak to five in all competitions, but it is now five clean sheets in a row in all competitions for Djokovic with four and Gabriel with one. So a 0-0 draw. It's not a bad result. Torino are in 14th place and we are the home side. So you'd expect us to win that, especially with 10 goals being scored in the last four games as well. But we're still top of the table and I'll look at the positives and say we've got a clean sheet and that's now five in a row. But uh, still falling out with some player training here for City Guardi and Ryan Taller. And check it out. Get in. Excellent stuff. I am so pleased to see this. Stop those effects. Don't need those effects here. Let's, see, let's, let's get rid of those. As you can see right here, Marco Ryan Taller has now hit 90 after the training. City Guardi went up a rating to 80 as well. Check it out. Mark and the Magician has finally hit 90 at 23 years old. I was two weeks out. I was two weeks out. We're in the second week of January right now. I was two weeks out. I said Ryan Tyler would hit uh, 90 in December. We're two weeks into January and he's now hit 90. I was two weeks out. I was pretty close. I was pretty close. But for anyone who said January 2021, well done. You got it right. Marco Ryan Tyler has now hit 90 in January. And I'm so, so pleased because you saw his stats right there. He's the star of the show. He's the star of the series. He's the skipper for Milan. He's just an amazing player and he's your hero as well because I didn't really rate him when we first got him out of the catalogue but you guys told me no stick with him he'll turn out to be amazing I was like nah I don't see it to be honest but you guys are right he turned out to be absolutely extraordinary I didn't want to stop this career as well until Marco hit 90 so to, to do it in our probably sixth and final season it all just blends in really well doesn't it so I'm really really pleased with that he's hit 90 you saw his stats right there he looks unreal as he already did at 89 but uh, either way really really pleased with that and uh, again he, he, he's your hero really and I'm, I'm so pleased that he has got a 90 as well because again I, I didn't want to stop this series until he hit it so to fact the fact he's got it done in the sixth and again probably, probably final season is uh, is really really pleasing to me but uh, still following that uh, a big came in for d Boca region also for Gabriel as well uh, Augsburg want to take Gabriel off us we asked for 15 million pounds from German side and also the German side Wolfsburg want to take a Rigi as well just like Rio Villacano did I asked for 50 million pounds though I don't see the match in that but uh, either way I did say that I wasn't going to sell a Rigi unless we got about 40 to 50 million pounds so we'll go big we'll see if Wolfsburg are going to match it probably not we asked 50 million pounds today and we'll wait and see what they say either way we're taking Cagliari here for the second and final game of today's episode in the Tim Cup here at the San Siro taking on Cagliari in the Tim Cup round of 16 and what a start to the game as well because just 12 minutes in he's under transfer bid right now from Wolfsburg D Boccarigi shows what he can do what a lovely goal this was Berber spin heel to heel flick stops the ball and then a Blanco hop a skill move I don't use very much and then as he slips he halfways the ball into the top corner and the Belgian scores his first goal in a few games and makes it Milan 1 Cagliari 0 so a great start to the game we did feel the weekend side obviously it's the Tim Cup we'll always do that even though we've now told the ball we'll try and reach the final either way Origi with the goal is uh, first in this competition because it's the first game in the competition for us and uh, also I think it's fifth goal of this season sixth goal of this season hasn't scored too many goals anyway Origi we does score there and opens the scoring and makes it Milan 1 Cagliari 0 so really pleased with that Cagliari though were sensing the fact we weren't really taking this competition too seriously even though it's around the 16 stage and fielding a weak inside they had a couple of chances in the uh, first half here but we were still leading by a goal to nil and after this header from the goalkeeper pass out from the back here Origi gets onto the goal scorer finds Suzo down the right hand side takes it around his man gets into the area with the Berber spin and gets taken down by the Cagliari defender who puts his arm up he knows it's a penalty he's not going to complain about it Suzo tripped up penalty to Milan and a chance to double our score as well so penalty to Milan Suzo won it Origi would take it though looking to double his goal tally and double our goals in the game as well the Belgian stands up and smashes the ball into the top corner goalkeeper route to the spot Milan 2 Cagliari 0 just past the half an hour mark and for Divo Carigi as well I did say that I believe he can come good you know I really do believe that I think he can be a good backup striker for us but he hasn't given me too much confidence but two goals in this game is uh, second brace of the season I think or maybe even his first brace thinking about it Evo he scores his second goal of the game here from the spot and makes it Milan 2 Cagliari 0 so we led by two goals 0 at the break we won 
weren't dominating though. Cagliari were playing quite well, just pretty unfortunate. We still live by two goals to nil, but 11 minutes after the restart though, look at this for a goal. I mean, this is genuinely Sunday league stuff. We make it 3-0 here. Verdi with his third goal of the season, I do believe, and this was just awful. And like the Cagliari defenders, I'm sorry, but this is just terrible. Gabriel comes out, clears the ball along, Arigi flicks it on, Verdi latches onto it, runs around a couple of defenders and just puts the ball into the back of the net. I mean, that is just absolutely terrible defending. Sunday league stuff, really. A simple long ball goal, and we make it Milan 3, Cagliari 0. So three goals in this game, an assist to add to the two goals that Origi scored. Three goals up, and in the 70th minute, Portillo comes off the bench for Origi. He was on a hat-trick, thought I put him on the bench, though, and uh, give him some, uh, some rest time, if you will. And Portillo comes off the bench, makes it four, and the game is over. So Milan 4, Cagliari 0. We are going through to the Tim Cup quarterfinals. Really pleased with that. And our last six results have been 4 0, 0 0. 3-0, 2-0, 3-0, and 2-0. So in the last six games, absolutely fantastic run of form. 14 goals, zero conceded. Two clean sheets for, uh, for uh, Gabriel, four for Djokovic as well. We've been in really good form right now. And this is great to see as well, because we were stuttering a little bit prior to this run of form. Now, playing really well, looking unbeatable, and looking really, really strong, both at the back and when going forward as well. Looking like the complete package here at Milan. So really pleasing result. Through to the quarterfinals of the Tim Cup, a easy man of match, and a great performance as well. And that is going to be today's episode of Career Mode as well, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do consider leaving likes. Of course, much appreciated. I really want to channel out. You don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.